Hello, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a great show today. You know, you watch the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series because we bring you leaders in the field. And if you watch the show often, you know that we're so interested in education. You know, everybody here at Dotcom Magazine, we believe that education is probably the single most important thing we need to focus on. I mean, when we teach young people how to read, how to write about the world that we live in, it's so important to have educated young people coming up throughout the world. And I've been able to invite on the show just a very remarkable entrepreneur. I mean, Lisa Collum is an author. She's the author and owner of Top Score Writing. We're going to get into it a little bit, but she has the number one curriculum business in the United States. Wait till you hear what Lisa does with her company. I mean, she's certified, her, her company certified so many people, so many teachers, so many school districts use her curriculums throughout the United States. She's become a powerhouse, and I'm just so honored and excited to have her on the show. Lisa, welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, it's a real honor. You know, we love getting people who are leading the field, leading the way, leading the charge, the, the people that are really resonating in their particular space. And in your particular space, Lisa, you're the go-to expert. So let's get into it. A lot of people know about Top Score writing, but let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and tell us about Top Score. Yeah, so Top Score Writing is a writing curriculum that gives teachers all the tools and resources they need to teach writing to students in second through 12th grade all school year long. I, We're giving them lessons, videos, resources, truly to give the teachers what they need, but also the students what they need to become effective writers. I love it. And of course, we spoke in the pre-interview, you know, I graduated with, with in teaching. I mean, that's what I wanted to do. That was my passion many, many years ago, many more years ago than I want to admit on the show right now. I, you know, there was no internet back then, of course, which is, which is kind of strange for people watching the show. But curriculums were so important. It was, you know, the thing that we had to build and had to write. And in this particular case, tell us how it works. Why do school districts bring top score in to help them with their curriculums? Most school districts have curriculum for reading, math, social studies, science, but for writing, it kind of gets lost in reading. We know reading and writing go hand in hand, but writing really needs its own curriculum because students need that daily practice. So what they do is they bring in top score writing as supplemental. The teachers don't have curriculum or lessons to follow because the reading just kind of what I call sprinkles in and out writing. So with top score writing, they're getting those lessons. They're getting those daily uh, resources and activities for the students to use and that repetition and practice. So the students slowly use those skills and build an essay or research paper, or whatever writing genre that they're working on. I love it. Let's talk a little bit about reading and writing. I mean, what's the connection between reading and writing? Because there has to be a connection. I just want you know, to sort of simplify that for our audience right now. Yeah, the big thing is, is that we want students to be able to put their thoughts on paper. So when they're reading about things, there's most of the time going to be some sort of reading response question or reading response, um, something that may be asked of someone, something they have to write about. But we want them to be able to show their understanding. And this can be across all subjects. So instead of your normal multiple choice tests, you can simply write about something you've learned. And it's honestly the number one way to see if students truly understand something. So one of the things that I work on in the curriculum that I provide lessons for is what we call text-based writing. We have students read passages, then they get a prompt that tells them to write about something specific and all the information that they'll need is found in those passages. So they're gonna need to know how to read and then write about what they've just read. I love it. And of course, when I was younger, we would write essays. And sometimes you would go into the final exam and you'd have to write an essay about a particular question or a story or, or some type of excerpt from a book. So, so for me, that worked very, very well. And then if that's part of your program, maybe you could get into that a little bit. 
Yeah. So the biggest part about our program is writing an essay. That's the first kind of form of writing that I like to teach students because it's structured. Most kids think I can't write. They get scared. They think there's no way I'm writing. And an essay, uh, you can teach it in a structured way that I always say has the pieces. And I show students those pieces. I show them how to take each part of their thought, put it on paper in a structured way. From there, we can then build into research paper writing or college essay writing. But it's mainly um, built around that basic essay, whether it be informative, where they're giving information or opinion, or obviously they're giving their opinion, or even a narrative, which would be like a story. I love it. It's so interesting. You know, as a public speaker, one thing they say is, you know, tell your audience what you're going to tell them tell them and then repeat what you just told them. But I would imagine in essay writing, there's this structure that's different and and it'd be really fascinating to learn the structure. And I think for kids going to college or writing their essays to get into college, uh, they need to know this structure. So that's why you're so popular with top score writing. Let's talk about it just for a minute. How does the conversation go when uh, a school district calls you or a teacher calls you, what's that conversation sound like with you and your team, Lisa, at top, at top score? The first thing we always do is ask schools what they're already using for writing. And most of the time it's found within their reading curriculum, or they maybe have something that teachers have uh, kind of come up with on their own, but they always feel like it's kind of pushed to the side and they're missing what they truly need. So we always you know, go over what top score writing offers, um, all the resources are given the teachers, and then we always give them those free lessons or free access to a demo because we want them to see what we're able to offer. We want to show them what we're, what we're giving them, but also that I created this as a teacher. I've been in their shoes. So I tried to make it where I took everything that I went through, all that, all the needs that I saw, and now I'm providing it to teachers that don't have to do any extra work. They don't have to worry about what they're going to teach the next day. They don't have to worry about creating the homework activity or the follow-up. Everything is there that they will need for the entire school year. So it's really a matter of talking with them. And I always go in identifying that problem and that we're the solution. And that's my number one way of kind of tackling it when I'm talking with schools. I love it. How do, how do the school districts pull it down? Is it all online? Does it get sent to them in a package? What's sort of the process for your school districts who are just loving top score? I mean, they can't get enough of it according to the reviews and what people are saying, you know, online about it and the teachers that are loving it. And of course, the students are loving it as well. What's the process for the school districts to get it into the hands of the teachers? So we have many different options for school districts. We have our print option, which are our curriculum books. These are your books in hand. Um, a lot of teachers like books in hand. They want to make the, the notes inside, put the sticky notes on different pages. So we have that option. But then we also have our digital license, which gives teachers access to everything that's in the books in PDF that they're able to download and print. But also in addition to that, our digital license gives teachers access to a video that goes with every single lesson which is myself or one of my team members teaching the actual lesson, along with an animated version of the lesson, which is the cartoon teaching the lesson, along with a PowerPoint and then additional resources. And we did this because we know that students need differentiation. We want to be able to deliver the lesson in many different ways. So now teachers have these resources. And with our video lessons, as an example, if a teacher's out, there's no need to miss writing. The substitute can just push play. Or if a student's struggling, they can pop open a laptop and put the student on and just push play. Well, wow, Lisa, it's super interesting. So well thought out. You've ticked and tied everything all the way to if a substitute teacher needs to teach the curriculum for that particular day or for a number of days. I love it so much. When we think about a classroom, not all the students are at the same level. So how does Top Score deal with that aspect of, you know, you got 25, 30, 20 kids in a classroom, but they're not all at the same level. How does that get incorporated into the classroom? 
Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things that, you know, I always want everyone to realize is students, not only are they all on different levels, students all learn differently. And that's one of the things that I built in coming from being a teacher for 10 years, being in the classroom, being in their shoes. I designed it to meet the needs of every kid. So we start with our simple structure, but then there's that room to grow. So there's lessons in there for students that are struggling. There's lessons in there for students that are more advanced. There's strategies in there for students that maybe aren't understanding the structure. There's self-assessment strategies. So we want not only to meet the needs of students, but then to give them the tools to be able to assess themselves and decide if they need help or if they're ready to move on to the next step. So it's really, we want to see students grow. Top score writing is all about growing writers. So we'll start with that simple structure and we'll keep building. Some students may move at a slower pace, which is fine. And some students may move ahead, but the lessons will meet the needs. And there's additional resources in every single curriculum kit for those students based on their levels. So interesting, Lisa. I mean, this is so well thought out and I can see why the school districts and the teachers absolutely love it. I mean, it's a custom made and innovative lesson you know, they're thought provoking to a certain you know, regard. I'm sure people are are taught to write original passages and, and, and it's very, very interesting and targeted at all reading levels. The thing, Lisa, that you mentioned, though, that really just caught my ear and it's very fascinating is, yeah, we always think about kids in, in the classrooms where they may be at certain levels. Of course, you know, that that goes without saying. But what you said about the fact that different kids learn in different ways. I mean, that's such a powerful idea and a powerful thought. How do you incorporate sort of that position with what you're doing at the company? Yep. And that's my main focus, knowing that students learn in different ways and providing those different resources and tools for teachers to be able to use. So at Top Score Writing, we're giving you those videos for students that may be more of those visual learners. We're giving you the cartoon videos for students that may need different voice, different face. I always say that students uh, or anyone learns differently sometimes by just a different person coming in there. We're giving those PowerPoints for students that like the teacher, maybe the auditory, they wanna hear the teacher delivering it. So now we're giving that resource the teacher to be able to teach it on their own, um, not with a video, but they have that PowerPoint to guide them. So we understand students learn different ways. We understand that there are certain strategies that work with different students. So I built them all in. I'll give you a simple example, color coding. Some students do really well with color coding. It's one of my favorite strategies. I've built that in throughout the curriculum and many of the lessons. I show teachers how to use that when teaching writing. And most students do it very, very well and become effective just by color coding and learning how to Um, assess those different parts, making sure they have them in their writing. Wow, it's so powerful. And of course, above your shoulder, you have a sign that says, lady, you got this. I love that so much. So I'm going to put you on a little bit of a spot here. So I'm going to say, lady, you've got this. Lisa, you've got this. We have a lot of you know adults watching the show. A lot of entrepreneurs watch the show. For people that go you know to dot com magazine or they follow me, they know I love to write, and I'm sure I'm not doing it as as well as I could. So maybe you could give some sort of pointers to maybe the adults watching the show about what it takes to write better. What what structure is the best way sort of to write in? Because I think that might resonate with a lot of our viewers right now. Yeah, for sure. I always say it's it's one of those, it's a lifelong skill we'll need forever. So, you know, my biggest thing when it comes to writing is getting your thoughts out on paper and then organizing them. And I always start with simple brainstorming, get them all out and then plan it out. We obviously can't say everything. If you have a hundred things to say, we've got to get it in some sort of organized fashion. So plan it out. Always start with that simple introduction. You've got those middle paragraphs and then your conclusion. So you always want to catch your reader's attention in the beginning, no matter what you're writing about, even if it was a simple Instagram post. You want to catch the attention. You want to go over your main points in those middle paragraphs. Make sure you give lots of support and details. Whatever your main point is, make sure you're giving examples. You're telling more about it. You're pulling more information so your reader can truly understand that point. And then you always want to wrap it up. I always compare it to a movie. It's like the ending of a movie. If it's not good, it kind of ruins the whole movie. So you want the ending to be just as good as the beginning and really close out so your reader leaves um, being happy that they read and maybe walking away learning something that you wrote about. I love that, Lisa. It kind of goes along with primacy and latency. They remember the first thing, the big bang coming out of the box. They remember the ending, you know, the way it ends and wraps up. And in the middle, 
<laughs> you know, they definitely remember the beginning and the end. Now, listen, Lisa, when we talk about children and we talk about reading and writing, what age is sort of the point where there's a point of no return? In other words, like we've got to get these young kids started at what age reading and writing so they become you know, masters of this very important process that, you know, top school writing has become known for. Yeah. So my, I start in curriculum because my um, grade that I believe all students can start writing a full essay in is second grade. Yes, reading and writing should start in kindergarten, first grade. We can do different things. We can draw pictures, write a sentence about them. But second grade is that time when students are ready to take those ideas, take those words, take those sentences and put them together in some sort of basic essay. So second grade is when it should start. I always tell teachers and parents, if second graders aren't writing an essay by the end of the year, then that school is doing a disservice to your kid because that's the beginning that's the beginning stage of writing they should be writing a simple essay because the thing is we want them to grow we can't just wait until they're in high school and then we're teaching them the basic structure of an essay by high school they should know the structure should have grown as a writer over the years and should be using advanced techniques and strategies in their writing but if you're just waiting till high school then we're cramming it down their throat trying to get it in and we're only going to get the basics out of them so it's really really important to start in those elementary years allow them to grow, and then they're going to learn different genres and be able to adapt based on what prompt they're given or what the assignment is. Well, Lisa, that's great advice for the people watching the show. I mean, second grade is the grade where, you know, your child should be able to learn or have learned how to write a basic essay. And if they haven't learned that, then, you know, you might want to run down and, and of course, tell your school district to jump on top score writing because they need it. Now, Let's talk about it just for a second, because when we talk about a second grader, I mean, what's the essay look like? Should they be able to talk about their own life and put it in an essay? What's the structure for a second grader so the people watching the show can sort of have a structure for themselves about thinking about whether their second grader is where they need to be, according to, you know, Lisa Collum in Top Score Writing? Yeah, for second grade, you're, you're talking about a basic essay, about three to five sentences um, per paragraph, and you want about five paragraphs. They can be simple sentences. It can be something as easy as write about your favorite place you like to visit. And maybe their introduction, they pick their place, they tell a little bit about it. Each of their middle paragraphs, they give three to five sentences. Uh, it could be as simple as I like Disney World because the rides and maybe one of their middle paragraphs is all about the rides and another middle paragraph is all about the food and another one is all about the games and then they close it out with a simple conclusion. It doesn't need to be this huge full blown essay. This is the beginning stage. You want them to keep growing year after year, but they can put together those ideas. They can have simple paragraphs. And the biggest thing is you want to see organization, which means they need to be indenting every time they're starting so we can clearly see where they're going and understand the flow of that overall essay. Uh, it's so cool. I mean, there's so much to unravel here. I mean, I know you've only cut out a certain amount of time for me today, but this is just so fascinating. And, and what about people that are doing homeschooling and they want their kids to, to improve in their writing as well. Let, let's talk about that for a moment. Does, does Top Score have an opportunity for those homeschoolers to teach their kids? Yes. So we have always had a homeschool product, but we revamped it and made it even better with more resources after COVID because we know we have a lot more families who are homeschooling now, whether they planned it or not. And so we want to be able to provide um, a resource that allows the parents to be hand off, hands off. So we do have our regular print curriculum where if the parent wanted to teach um, the lessons, they could themselves have the lesson plans and the activities. But we also made a video series for every single Single lesson. That way, when parents are homeschooling, let's say they have multiple children, or maybe they're working from home as they're homeschooling, they can now put their child on the computer and have the child just push play. And we, meaning myself or my team, will teach the child through that video. 
We talk to them just like we're in front of them. Um, it's made uh, with directions speaking to them. It comes with activities. Everything is done so that the parents can be hands off with that. So it really alleviates um, the parents having to worry about finding writing curriculum and let alone teaching it. Um, so it is available to our homeschool parents. And we, we have parents nationwide using the program right now and raving about it because there's really nothing else out there that provides those daily lessons with videos that go with every single lesson. That's awesome, Lisa. And, you know, I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking about writing and I'm thinking about this structure that you mentioned. When I was a young kid, I don't remember learning about a structure, uh, but I would think that once someone goes to top score, they're using your curriculum, it's in the school district, that young people that learn this structure and this process, I would imagine that after learning that, that they become even better at the other subjects because it lets their brain sort of think in the right way and how to process things. Is that one of the ideas behind Top Score? Yeah, we want this to be cross-curricular. We want this to be able to use in all subjects, that that skill of writing should be used uh, you know, across all subjects, across all grade levels, across all different things in life, whether it be school or job, writing emails, different things like that. So the idea is once they learn this structure, they're, they're then able to use it in those various subjects. It could be as simple as science. You know, there could be a question on a test or a question the teacher asks, and you have to explain the answer. We're moving a lot more towards students having to show their understanding rather than just choosing A, B, C, or D. And most students are getting marked off or losing points because they can't explain it right. If you ask them, they can tell you, but the writing part of it. So it just goes hand in hand once they've learned that skill of writing and how to get their thoughts down on paper correctly, then they can apply it to all other subjects. Yeah, I love that. And this morning, just in the, in the online news this morning, there was a fascinating article that someone wrote, an expert wrote, and they said that because social media is so prevalent, young people have stopped using apostrophes and they've stopped using commas and they're not using periods the way that they should because they only have so much time to get the message out in social media. So I would imagine that this is a battle between sort of teaching the kids the right way to, to, to write and, and, and read versus sort of what social media is sort of pressing them into. Is that what you're finding out into the world today? Oh, yeah, for sure, especially with the texting and all the different acronyms that mean things. And, you know, the way I explain it to kids is it's just it's, it's its own genre, right? You have maybe social media or texting. It's its own way. But they are going to have to be prepared. I remind them you have to take the ACT and the SAT in college. You're going to have to write essays, even in high school before that. When you have a job, eventually, you're going to have to write emails to construct them in a way that makes sense, especially if you're a project manager of any, any sort and you have to give, you know, different items or explain a project to someone, you need to be able to put it out there in a way that makes sense. So it's it's a struggle because kids are stuck in that social media and texting mind frame right now. But I think that's why it's even more important for teachers to make sure that writing is in the front and center of their day-to-day -day work. And they're providing those lessons and explaining to kids. You can't just teach it and expect it. You've got to have that conversation with kids. Hey, you're going to have to do this. So yes, you have your texting language, but this is writing. We're essay writing right now or research paper writing. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you the structure and how to do that. So that's really the way that I approach it with kids because um, it's a battle right now with it. And I don't want them to get lost in only that one genre of writing because I want them to be prepared for that life skill, what they're going to need. Yeah, that's a powerful approach. It makes all the sense in the world. Now there's competition between school districts sometimes. And I would imagine that school districts want the best that they can afford, the best of the best. Let's talk about the certification of your curriculum, because I think that's important sort of the, to talk about just briefly, because if I'm either at home schooling and I'm thinking about, you know, what I want my kids to learn, or I'm a, uh, in the school district as an admin, I want to make sure that what I'm buying, what I'm offering is something that's certified. And I know that yours is, but let's just touch on that briefly. Yeah. So one of the main things with top score writing that I want to make sure everyone understands is we are 100% research based. I actually have two companies that I had 
do the research and produce the white paper um, to be able to show school districts that all the strategies used in the curriculum are research-based. And also every single passage that is used in the curriculum is certified by Metametrics. So one of the most important things about a curriculum is when you're using passages, you wanna make sure they're on grade level. And so, yes, my team wrote them. We, we are all educators, but we wanted to assure and make sure that we know that they're on grade level, but also certify them through Metametrics which is Lexile.com. And if you're an educator, we all know Lexile.com is where we find out um, what different reading or what different reading passages are in level or books, different things like that. You can find the levels. So it was really important to me to make sure that everything was certified and research-based. That way teachers and school districts know what they're buying. They know that it's on grade level. They know that it's research-based strategies and they know that's gonna work with students. On top of that, we have data after data after data submitted from teachers. And we're constantly sharing that on our website and social media because we want teachers to know that it does work. And we always share our, I always say our real testimonials from our real teachers so that other teachers can contact them and know that it's something that works and that teachers like to use and that students find simple for them. I love it, Lisa. This is awesome. I, I know you've only sliced out a certain amount of time. I'm going to have you back on the show because I think it would be really fun to have a show with you and just talking about adults and how adults should write and what we need to be thinking about and how we should write emails and how we should write business letters and things like that, which I know also you'll be able to you know, give some great insight into. And that's going to be another show completely. But listen, we have younger entrepreneurs watching the show. I mean, here you are, you've got top score writing. I mean, everybody talks about it. You're in so many school districts, so many people that uh, do home curriculums are using it. You've got a great team, a world-class team that helps you with the curriculums. You constantly update the curriculums all the time. You get great feedback from the people using it. But for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show, let's give them some feedback. You know, they might be going through their entrepreneurial journey. Maybe they're having a tough time. Maybe they're hitting a pothole in the road. Maybe you could share with them what it takes to get through those tough times as a fellow entrepreneur to come out the other side in a much more powerful way. Yeah, for me, I, I started this very young and I didn't go into life in general wanting to start a business. I was a 100% educator. So when I saw this need and decided to do this, I had no clue what I was doing. And so I always tell everyone who is either an entrepreneur already in the early stages or who wants to be, um, first is start it. Don't worry about the perfect business plan. Don't worry about figuring everything out because I had no clue what I was doing. Um, and expect tons of bumps in the road and lots of roadblocks. But I always tell everyone, for every bump and roadblock, look at that and figure out what the lesson that you're going to learn from it is and keep moving forward. Because all of my bumps and failures, whatever you want to call them, every single one of them only made me better and only made my company grow. And so in the end, it was all those lessons that really helped push me forward and really drove me to the success I'm at now. I think that the biggest thing, and I'll go back to kind of what I said in the beginning was find that problem or that need and show them that you're the solution. Let people use parts of it for free, whether it's a product or service, let them get a taste of it. People want to make sure it works and always share those testimonials, you know, get things in return from people. I, I share a lot with teachers and I say, I'll let you use a digital license. Can you give me some feedback that I can share with other people? Can you share it on your social media? So there's lots of ways to get true testimonials to kind of spread the word um, to other people that may be interested in your product or service, but keep pushing through. It's it's not never going to be this easy, easy road, but I promise years later, you'll look back and say, gosh, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have learned this. Or if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here now. So it's just part of the, the journey. I love it. Great advice. And for the entrepreneurs watching the show, rewind what Lisa just said, you know, she never thought she was going to be an entrepreneur, but in her educational background and her journey, she saw a big problem and she she had the chops to solve it. And she took one foot in front of the other and did such a great job. And then of course, surrounded herself with such talented people and so many amazing sort of mentors and people that understand what it takes to build a business. Lisa, this has been a phenomenal show. I have one last question for you. When I was a young man, we used to have to write a book. We used to have to read a book. 
and then write a book report. And Mm -hmm. it was one of my favorite things to do as, as I was growing up, you know, in elementary school through junior high school. Is that something that still resonates for, for young kids and for teachers these days? Do they still do book reports? Yeah, no, book reports are a big part of school because it goes back to that. We want to make sure as educators that you read it and you understand it. You know, you can read a book, as I always say, are you actually reading it and comprehending or are you just reading the words? We want to make sure they're reading and comprehending. And that that book report or any, any type of written response is how we see if students understand it. And that simple structure that I teach can be used in a book report as well. And I'll, that's a perfect example of how if you just tell kids to write a book report, Some kids have no idea what to do, but if you show them the structure and the pieces of each part of that book report, then they're able to take that thought that they're telling you and put it on paper and show you that they truly understand what they just read. Yeah, that's remarkable. I didn't have the structure. So of course, when I was in third, fourth and fifth grade, I read the same book every year. So I did the same report every year. And that's a, you know, you know, Ms. Shapiro and Mr. Dawson, if you're watching the show, Uh, I'm sorry I did that back many, many years ago. Listen, Lisa, this has been awesome. I love what you're doing. You're really changing the dynamic of our world. And you must wake up every morning saying to yourself, wow, this is great because I get to change the fabric of our society by having people, young people, learn how to write, which then transfers to reading and all the other subjects through what you're doing at Top Score Writing. It's absolutely remarkable. I'm going to have you back on the show We're going to talk about adults and how they can write better emails and business letters and things like that, which will be very fascinating. But for now, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series. This has been a real awesome show. Thank you so much for having me. It was amazing. 